In this review video, we'll be examining the differences between lurking and confounding variables. To start, confounding variables occur in experiments. It's a variable within the experiment that's uncontrolled, and it can have an effect on a response variable that makes it difficult to determine if any differences in that response variable are due to the treatment of the group received or because of the confounding variable. So as an example, let's say we're running an experiment on dental health. We randomly select two towns and we decide again randomly to treat the public water supply in one town with fluoride while the other town uses their regular water without fluoride. Local dentists record the number of cavities and the mean number of cavities are compared against the two groups. Unbeknownst to the researchers, the town receiving the fluoride is the home to many dairy farms and its residents consume larger amounts of milk than the town receiving the water without fluoride. Milk is high in calcium and that's known to strengthen bones. Once this experiment is done, the conclusion finds that there's a statistically significant difference in the average number of cavities across both groups with the fluoride group having less calories on average. Is the difference due to the fluoride or is it because of the additional milk that they drink? We're not sure this experiment has been confounded. Let's take this opportunity to refresh on some of the key terminology in experimental design. So in this experiment, there's one factor. It's the water type and there's two levels to that factor, added fluoride versus no added fluoride. This adds up to two treatments, which is the same thing in this case as the levels. Subjects are the residents of the two towns. The subjects are who are receiving our treatments. Response variable, this is what we're measuring on each of our subjects. In this case, it's the number of cavities per resident. And we're going to use that response variable to come up with statistic. And the statistic is the average number of cavities per resident in each town. A statistic is a summary value. It takes all of our response variables and it narrows it down to a single number for each group. When we do a hypothesis test or a confidence interval, we're working with the statistics from a sample, the summary values. We had talked about there being a confounding variable here. It's the amount of milk that the residents in these two towns are consuming. And this could be avoided with appropriate randomization. So there was randomization in this design. They randomly selected two towns. They randomly decided which town would get the fluorinated water and which wouldn't. But when we actually uh, conducted this experiment, the subjects ended up being placed in groups with others that have similar characteristics. All the heavy milk drink drinkers were grouped together. We could have eliminated this by randomizing more appropriately. If we randomly uh, assign specific subjects to receive fluorinated water, then that confounding variable would not have occurred. The easiest way to do this would probably have been to, con to take more towns in our sample and randomly decide which towns get which type of water. I also used the word statistically significant on the previous slide, and that's saying that our results can't be explained just by chance. There was a difference in the number of cavities that had to do with something other than chance alone. It could have been our treatments or it could have been this confounding variable in this case. So that was confounding variables. Let's move on to lurking variables. These occur in observational studies. And a lurking variable is a variable that affects both the explanatory and response variable, and it creates the illusion of a causal relationship that doesn't actually exist. Let's take a look at this graph here. We have number of firefighters along the x-axis, number of or amount of damage along the y-axis, and we can see that there's a very distinct positive relationship here. As the number of firefighters increases, the amount of damage increases with it. So it's clear that firefighters cause damage to people's homes. Obviously, that's not the case. There's a lurking variable here. That's the size of the fire. As the fire gets larger, you need more firefighters to fight it, and it's going to increase the amount of damage to the home. And a refresher on observational studies, often they'll have a scatter plot like this, but not always. Explanatory variable in this case is the number of firefighters. That's along the x-axis. And that's supposedly explaining the response variable. Response variable is the amount of damage. The type of this study is retrospective because we're looking at past data. If it was going into the future, it would be pros prospective and a single point in time would be cross-sectional. If we're asked to describe this association, anytime we're describing a scatter plot, we use FUDS. That stands for Form, Unusual Features, Direction, and Strength. Form, 
It's probably slightly curved here, okay, non-linear, although we might be able to uh, straighten it a little bit by eliminating a point up there. Uh, we'd really want to look at the residual plot to make a, a final decision on that. Unusual features, maybe this point up top, it's a positive direction and a moderately strong association. Unlike confounding variables that can be eliminated using randomization, there's no way to eliminate the possibility of a lurking variable. And it's for that reason that we can never draw any causal conclusions from an observational study. You need that randomization uh, in a randomly controlled experiment to make that kind of causal conclusion. Lastly, students tend to throw these terms around and you shouldn't be using either of these terms unless you're absolutely sure that they're appropriate. You tend to put these into your answers when you don't know what to write, and in most cases, it's decreasing your score.